Hey, it's Sam from Sugar Spun Run, and today I wanted to talk to you about the three biggest mistakes that I see home bakers make when they are making homemade cakes. I see this over and over again. If you run into cakes that are too dense, too dry, too crumbly, they taste like cornbread or they're baking unevenly, then most likely you are making one of these mistakes. Number one mistake that I see comes down to how you're measuring your flour. So here's what I usually see, and there's no judgment if you're doing this because this is how I used to measure flour back in the day just before I knew better. Most people will take their measuring cup and they scoop right into their flour container and then they'll level it off, but what they don't realize is they're accidentally packing in way more flour than they need. Say your recipe calls for two or three cups of flour, so you do that two or three times and your cake just doesn't stand a chance. It's going to be dense, it's going to be dry. So here's how to fix it. Before you measure your flour, you're going to want to take a spoon and you're going to want to stir your flour. We're just kind of fluffing it a little bit, that way it's not already packed into the container and it's not already dense before you even start measuring it. Then you'll take your spoon, you'll just scoop that flour lightly into your measuring cup and then you'll level it off. That's going to give you the proper amount of flour. Any recipe developer who knows what they're doing and who is measuring using cups is going to be weighing that way. So that's how you're going to get the best results with the recipe. But wait, there's more. And if you've been following me a while, you probably already know I'm going to say this. There's an even better way to measure your flour, any of your ingredients really, and that is using a kitchen scale. A kitchen scale is going to give you consistent results every time. You just place your measuring cup on there, tear the scale, or you place your bowl on there, tear the scale, and then you add the weight indicated in the recipe. All of my recipes include weight measurements. I only test my recipes using weight measurements because it's the most accurate, and that is the best way that you're going to guarantee you're going to get the best results possible and that your cake will end up looking like the pictures. Now, the number two mistake that I see home bakers make comes down to how they are mixing their ingredients. I don't usually go into much about this, but if a recipe tells you to cream together your butter and sugar, it's important that you actually do cream them together, which means mixing them long enough that the consistency changes a little bit. It shouldn't look lumpy, it should look smooth and lighter than when you started, and this usually takes at least a minute, and that's if you're using an electric mixer on medium speed. So creaming is important, and using an electric mixer if one is called for is very helpful, but there is a point where you want to put your electric mixer or your stand mixer away because it's actually going to ruin things for you. Now this is most true for cakes that use the traditional creaming method that we were just talking about. You're not going to see this tip apply in some of my other recipes like my chocolate cake where we're not creaming the butter and sugar together. But when you have a recipe where you have wet ingredients and dry ingredients separately and you need to combine them, once you start combining them, you want to stop using your electric mixer. Instead, switch to a spoon or preferably a spatula and start gently folding your ingredients together. Together. Once you get to this stage with your cake batter, if you overmix, you're going to run into a couple issues. One, you could end up deflating all of that air that you worked into the batter earlier on that you don't want to lose. Two, you can cause tunneling and cracking in your cakes. Three, you can cause a very dense and dry texture because what you're doing is you are overdeveloping the gluten in the cake and that can make your cake tough. If you have a few small lumps in your cake batter, that's fine. You shouldn't see dry flour. The batter should be mostly uniform in consistency, but a few small lumps are fine. Overworking the batter is one of the easiest ways to go wrong, especially if you're making a traditionally creamed cake. Number three is the one you may feel like you have the least control over, and that's because this comes down to your oven. I hate to break it to you, but most likely your oven is lying to you about what temperature it actually is. My oven in my first home was running 25 degrees hotter than it said it actually was, and this is actually super common. Your best bet is to get an oven thermometer, maybe even two, I usually keep two in my oven, and hang them in your oven closest to where you're going to be doing most of your baking, which is the center of your center rack. Speaking of the center rack, unless otherwise indicated, you're always going to want to be baking on that rack of your oven. If you're baking several layers of cake at once, don't make this mistake of putting one on the upper rack, one in the middle rack, one on the lower rack. You always want to be using the middle rack unless otherwise indicated. If you don't have an oven thermometer, hopefully you are sort of familiar with how your oven is running. I recommend running out and grabbing an oven thermometer, but I also wanna recommend that when a recipe lists a range of time, you always start with that lower range of time and then you test your cake to see if it's done. Even if your oven temperature is running accurate, you could be using a darker pan. It's just better to check your cake sooner as even baking for two minutes too long can make your cake dense and dry. When it comes to testing your cake, the best way to do it is with the magic toothpick test. 
I love this test. What you do is you just insert the toothpick into the center of your cake, and if it comes out clean, it's done. However, if your cake is overdone, it's also going to come out clean. So that could be a bummer. What you actually want to aim for is a toothpick that comes out with a few moist crumbs on it. Shouldn't be wet batter, just a couple of crumbs. What this means is your cake is almost done baking, like really, really, really close. So when you pull it out of the oven, it's actually going to finish baking completely while it sits in the cake pan. And then you're going to have a perfectly moist, tender cake that is not overbaked. That's your sweet spot. On that note, if your recipe tells you to let the cake sit for 10 or 15 minutes and then flip it out of the pan, you should really follow those instructions. Don't leave it in the pan longer because it is going to continue baking in that pan, at least for a while. So flip it out according to the time mentioned, and that is going to help keep your cake from overbaking and being dry as well. So those are my three top tips for home bakers who are struggling with their homemade cakes. If you have any other baking or decorating related questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. I'd love to talk about them more. I really hope this was helpful. If it was, make sure to subscribe so you can see all of the recipes that I share. And thank you so much for watching. How they are mixing their cakes. I expected it to turn on. How they are mixing their ingredients. Too cheesy, probably.